With everyone excited about the first day of riding after a long commute on the highway from the flatlands of the Midwest, we took off to play in the winter wonderland of snow. I had a buddy uh, that I met on uh, dotalk.com, uh, Chuck uh, Beasley. And uh, I kept seeing all the pictures when he would go out west, and I just uh, thought that was really my type of riding. Back in Michigan, I do a lot of off-trail riding, so I thought what better place to come and get really off the trail and out into the mountains. So we went out one time, and that hooked me for life. They say once you come out west, it's an addiction. You just uh, can't give it up. So then uh, a few years later, I uh, got a hold of Rick, Mom's Motorsports. Been coming out with him ever since. Help him drive the semi out, bring everybody out to areas like this. This is some serious snow here. Yeah, first time to Cook City. Well worth the trip. What are you expecting out here? I've already seen it in the first half mile since we've been up here. <laughs> Anything else is bonus. Deep fluffy powder. I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> We're in God's country. Can you think of anything better to be doing than this today? Uh, no, not at all. Not at all. How's the snow today? Excellent. About four feet off the trail. Look how deep it is. Perfect powder. Well, if getting stuck was the name of the game, I think we're winning. As they say in the mountains, if you're not getting stuck, you're not doing it right. That's how you use a snow bungee. Worth their weight in gold. Easy as five. I've been mountain riding for about five years, I guess, and I think I need some intervention because I'm addicted, man. This stuff is unbelievable. Um, I dream all summer of coming to this place, Cook City and top of the world. It doesn't get any better than this. Clark Anderson, who's on his first day on his new mountain sled, takes a shot at the deep powder. Lost the GPS unit. How'd you lose that? Hit a tree. <laughs> Actually, Clark hit the tree. What were you thinking? This tree's kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Well, it's, it's already it's dead. I thought I'd just take it out. <laughs> It's kind of old, needs a little pruning. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, do you see the new carnage on the hood on the brand new summit? What is it, Jacob? I don't know. After the battle with the dead tree, we head to a new spot to do a little high marking and playing on the side of the mountain. This isn't the first trip to the mountains for most of these guys, so when making a trip to the mountains, take it slow and get used to the way the snowmobile maneuvers in the powder while getting comfortable with the terrain. Got it.
thanks for sticking with us on DMX Motorsports. We're still out in Cook City. We're kicking the mountains around and out in the steep and deep. We're shredding these things, and uh, the guys we're with are having a great time. You guys having a good time? Yep. Yeah. The guys are having a good time. Now that the stuff sucks. Cook City's uh, probably one of the deepest snow places that I've ridden out here. Um, this is this is the deepest snow that I've been in, and uh, you just can't beat Cook City because of the uh, the terrain, the mountains, and the views. It's just it's beautiful. As soon as you leave the motel, you get uh, picturesque uh, views, 360 all the way around. Biggest thing is just be patient. If you get stuck, take your time. You know, get your Meyer bottled spring water out from Michigan and take a break and assess the situation. And uh, just take your time. You know, take a break, pack the snow around your sleds, and uh, you know, if you got a buddy that's close by and in a safe position, wait for them to come over and give you a hand. Snow bungees are a must out here. Got to have snow bungees. Bungee on the front and a bungee on the back. The name of this game is what? Bungee Leapfrog? <laughs> Snow bungees are getting one heck of a good workout today. I've found myself in a bit of a predicament trying to follow these guys up a hill to an old shack. I never did quite make it up there, and Jacob Mom found himself in a worse situation trying to help me. Well, we found another fun spot here. It started to take a little while to dig out. Sorry, right. we needed a little break. Riding out here really wears you out. On the way out, I'd say just try to drink as much fluid as you possibly can and uh, you know if you're planning on coming out you know you're coming out a month or two in advance I usually try to you know hit the treadmill or stair climber and get uh, your cardio going and that makes a big difference Here we are, second day at Cook City, Montana, up here at Bear Claw Bob's. He's taking care of us. The group that we brought out from Indiana, the Michiana Trail Riders Coalition, Deke and his all gang, they're all heading over to the top of the world today. We're going to tag along behind them, see how things are going with them. We're going to play a little bit over there, and maybe we might run into them when we're over there a little bit, get a few shots over there too, and then we'll all run back together. It's about a 30 mile ride over there, so we thought we'd just all kind of tag along. But looking forward to tearing up some stuff today after the ride out and bringing these guys out here i enjoy getting out and playing too now and then and since they're heading that way we thought it'd be an opportunity to all go over together so that's just what we did and man was it worth the 30 minutes on the trail Riding in the steep and deep powder is almost magical. It seems as soft and fluffy as a cloud. Sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't, so try to be aware of the hidden dangers under the snow when playing in the powder. All of these lakes are frozen and very safe, but because of a little slush buildup under the snow and above the ice, my rental sled from Bear Claw Bob blew a belt when I opened up the throttle in the slush below. These guys were kind enough to change it for me so I could videotape the short pit stop. Neither of you guys own an our cat. <laughs> you ain't known this guy one week and you're working on his sled. Yeah, break through the Typical snowmobile. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on. There you go. We got her. Yeah. To touch it, you know, at least it said help. It's my wrench, by the way. <laughs> that, you know, Are you that, charge it by the turn or what? That's, <laughs> no, that's just one beer. Oh. That's all. Jeez, you're cheap. It's a small price to pay 30 miles out in the middle oh, of nowhere. You got those two little ones yet? Did he just say you got little ones, Kevin? I, yeah, I think I... I, I think wouldn't take those that. Two little ones? I wouldn't take that.
With the belt changed and everyone rested and back to the powder, as I said earlier, it's almost magical. It's something I think everybody should try if they're physically able. Oh, there's nothing like it. I love it. This is the first time to Cook City. I rode Togety, I rode Snowy's. Um, Cook City, I think, is the place for me. It's got a little of everything. We got mountains, we got valleys, we got meadows, we got lakes, we got places to do powder turns. Yeah, it's just phenomenal. It is phenomenal, but there are dangers. It is wise to take an avalanche safety course and carry the necessary life-saving gear. If you use a little common sense and listen to the locals, your mountain experience will be well worth the trip and you will not believe that you haven't done it sooner. I'm not a real experienced rider, but I'll tell you what, from a guy that's been in the flatlands all his life, uh, you don't have to be intimidated by any of this. Uh, there's enough steep and deep for the big boys and, and light meadows and playing, and it's just an awesome place to be. I look forward to coming here every year. I think this is my fourth trip uh, with moms, and uh, they just treat us good they, from start to finish. We're here in Wyoming now. We started in Cook City this morning, had a 30 mile ride out here to the steep and deep out in the powder, and it is fantastic. If you can't tell, it's a beautiful blue sky day. We're kind of in the shade here for a second, taking a little break. We're shredding the hill here and just having a wonderful time. I wish I was riding a little more, but there's just too much good video to get. We'll be right back, top of the world in Wyoming. Now that the guys have got me unstuck again, we found a pristine meadow to play in, and we're sure all enjoying our day on top of the world in Wyoming. Well, Rob set the camera up up here. This, this meadow was completely pristine. We was back there playing. He got it all set up, told us to come out here. It was time lapse. He wanted us to tear up anything we could, every which direction, launch off what we could, powder donuts. I told him I was gonna do a donut around the camera. He told me, do whatever I want as long as I don't hit the camera. And then I come out here and realized I couldn't really get all the way around it with a powder donut. So I was doing what I could in front of it. Things got a little crazy. The main thing is I did not hit the camera. I did hit the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Anything for airtime, huh, Rick? Airtime, that's it. Airtime. <laughs> Cook City, Montana. It's the place to go, I tell you what. I think it's probably pretty hard to tell, but I came over here to get a little better angle of the powder of someone coming up the hill at me, and I am all the way up to my chest in snow with one of my legs bent back the other way and the other one sticking straight down, and I think that I'm just about as stuck as uh, these sleds down here. So I'll be back in a, in a little while when I figure out how I'm gonna get out of here to go figure out how these guys are gonna get out of here because it's not pretty right now. <laughs> I might be too tired to go anywhere once I get out of here. I think that's a nervous laugh. It's a, I think everything sounds a little nervous right now, but it's a beautiful day. I don't think we could ask for anything more than we're getting out here in this powder. Oh, this could take some doing. It. 
Oh. I know this is kind of scary because I am kind of, and I think I'm in a tree hole here. Well, Rob, I went over that knoll over there, exposed rock, caught it with this carbide right here, and found an A-arm. We got somebody in the group out trying to confiscate a log for us, so maybe we can get it straightened back out and make it rideable again. Slight damage, hopefully it's just A-arm, nothing major, anything else, so I think it'll live another day. Watch out for the rocks in Cook City. They are out there. A little Cook City carnage. Cook City carnage. It's all good though. It's worth it. We can afford a couple A-arms for the fun we're having. You just got to be careful. I, you know, you should have known there's wind, wind blowing knolls and this and that and they do, you know, uncover exposed rocks. So it happens. We'll get her straightened out here and get back on the snow and have some more fun. Cook City. 40, 50 yards to the left of that. See that little windblown drift? I spied that. I'm gonna go check that out. This property is probably the number one area for snowmobiling in Montana now. We've got snow for nine months out of the year. And it's, all, it's steep and deep is what we say up here. There's writing for everybody, from novice to expert. You can go play in meadows and, and learn the terrain, get used to the area, or you can just jump right up on the mountain and, and climb anything you want to. From out of your soul, let it ride. From deep inside, let the world that you are free, let it roam. You gotta let it roam. Billy Bones was the man who worked down at the market. He chewed the back of Mama real long. He didn't want to talk about it. He ran the numbers for Ed and May. In the basement of the barber shop Until things in North Detroit started getting real hot Cook City, Montana is where we're at. We're boondocking. Right above the city is down there below us in a little valley. We're out here checking out the uh, woods. Looks like a fire has come through here and there's a lot of logs and a lot of things to get hung up on. And that's just what we're doing. We're getting stuck, but you guess what? We're having a blast. We got a couple other guys down below trying to get back up here to us. And uh, when we get back with them, we'll head out and do a little more snowmobiling in Cook City, Montana. Well, we're trying to pick our ways through the trees through some really deep powder. It's really tight in here, running over logs and getting stuck here and there. But uh, it's overall pretty good. As you can tell, we got uh, tons of uh, tons of powder here. It's a real challenge, and uh, you don't have to try real hard to get stuck. What's up? How's the powder today? It's great. It's kind of a situation right here. All kinds of down logs. We keep running into them, over them, on top of them. What are we but thinking? We're having a ball. Well, we're thinking we're a little bit higher than we should have been. We need to be down over this ridge. We got another guy hung up down over there, so it might be a little while before we get out of here, so it's all good. Well, we spent a lot more time than we would have liked to being hung up in the trees, and we didn't get to do quite as much snowmobiling that we would have liked to. But all in all, we had another great day of snowmobiling. Cook City, Montana. What's that guy rolling though? What's he got on stuff and stuff rolling? Woohoo! That one didn't come down good. <laughs> that was kind of hard. You did good to stay on the f. Woo! I mean, I'm oh, sorry. This little trail was just the scenic path to another place where we played for a few minutes on the way back to Cook City for dinner at Terry's Bakery. Rick 
Mom with Mom's Motorsports here. The fourth day here at Cook City. Got a whole bunch of guys getting ready to go out. We've had some stuff over the last few days going on with sleds, been doing some repairs and getting ready to go out and find some new areas today. We got one guy with one of the snowmobile clubs, got a real close uh, area we can go to today. It's supposed to be some good playing. They were down there yesterday. Follow them on over there, see how things are looking. Uh, do a little bit of filming, maybe get stuck a few times. Hopefully get some sights in. It's supposed to clear up a little later on today. We'll just see how it goes. As we started out on the fourth day, we came across another play area with untouched powder. Along the tree line just past where the guys are sitting is the wilderness area. There is no motor vehicles allowed past the posted area. We spent all day riding along the boundary, minding our P's and Q's and not crossing this boundary. The fresh powder made for a wonderful afternoon in the Rocky Mountains. It seems like reckless abandon, and well, maybe it is. But the more you try it and the more you do it, I guarantee you're going to like it. I like to trail ride also, but this is an entirely different kind of snowmobiling that I'm used to from the Midwest. I don't think it can be beat. I'm, I'm taking pictures. I always thought, oh, I wouldn't take too many pictures. I got about 316 pictures taken as of today. A um, lot of scenery. It's beautiful. One thing I like about snowmobiling is that we can track up a whole area and um, snow melts and you never know we've been here. about five foot long, got it wedged in between my ski, couldn't turn and ended up down in the tree well. Once again, the snow bungee makes short work out of a stuck sled. Snow bungee in action. That's the snow bungee, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Bravo. <laughs> Well, one of the reasons I keep coming back here is because of the treatment that we get. Uh, Bear Claw Bob looks after us, top-notch facility. I don't know anywhere else you can go in the Rocky Mountains where the guy's going to open up his place to you like your family. And I mean that from start to finish, from uh, the meals that they serve, home-cooked meals, to if you need anything, he's there for you 24 hours a day. You need a tool, you need a shop, you need anything. Uh, there's no place that I can think of that'll treat you the way you're treated here. Cook City used to be a mining town, started in the late 1800s, ran to 1950. Oh, in 1988, they started doing exploration, and by 1994, the, they had found $800 million worth of gold in, in one of the adits the old timers had uh, dug. Um, but then in 94, summer of 94, the environmentalist and Clinton flew in, bought the mine out, and so now all mineral rights are government property of this area.
on my helmet. Somebody told me a long time ago, you don't need a $50 helmet for a $5 head. Well, I've been to some other places, and, and what I found in some of the other places I've been is the weather can be a little dicey. You know, you spend a lot of time in a vehicle getting to where you're going, and then you sit around and you hope for some weather. And every time I've been to Cook, uh, this is about the worst it gets for me. Who needs a Sandals Resort when you have this place? It's uh, top notch. Everything's 100%. You say you want to be free, but they're staying right here with me. I pay the doctor. Those love pillows is mine. This is about the worst it gets for me. I mean, just a little bit overcast. But, you know, out of five days, I bet you you're going to get at least four good days of riding. And if not, three just phenomenal days. Yesterday was Bluebird Skies. Uh, today's just a little overcast, but some of the other places I've been, I, I've just been, you know, pulling my hair out trying to see, I'm running myself over, and uh, this is second to none. Those love pillows is mine. There, there are areas that are extreme to avalanche areas. Uh, most townspeople will try to help the people that don't know the area to tell them where to stay out of. I've been on search and rescue for numerous years. It was supposed to be just for me, not for everyone else to see. I know they sure look damn good, but did you have to show the whole neighborhood? I paid the doctor. On the way to our next play place, we found this spot where I just couldn't resist having the guys get a little air for the camera. I've been looking for the perfect beauty shot with a snowmobile in the air and the mountains for a backdrop, and I think I found it on this last attempt. There's something about playing in the snow that's just a little bit juvenile. But what the heck, it feels pretty good to be acting like a kid again. The one thing that happens when snowmobiling on the trails or in the mountains is that all your worries and troubles are gone for a while. Reality is always waiting for you when you get home, but it's fun to avoid your troubles if it isn't just for a little bit. Cook City, Montana, it's the place to be, man. Go there and look up Bear Claw Bob. Need a ride out there? Call Mom's Motorsports. Get on Do Talk, ask some references. There's plenty of people been out here with us before. The point now where the guys we bring out pretty much know how to get around, they know where they're going. We follow them around here and there and have a good time. Get ready to haul everybody back home, load up another group, come back out the next week. When riding in the mountains, avalanche beacons are a must. It is also a good idea to carry a probe pole and a shovel. There are also backpacks made to inflate and keep you on top of the snow in case of an avalanche. Oh, it won't burn no more. Well, I heard we were having a hot dog roast. So I went out and got some lumber and brought it back. <laughs> I feel very fortunate to have this opportunity in my life. There, there's many people that'll never get to see uh, you know, what we've seen and go where we have go. Um, it's just, like I said before, I, all summer I dream of coming to these places and uh, I, I get giddy like a schoolgirl. I mean, uh, yesterday and, and even today, um, I just get this excitement deep inside and, and I don't know how to explain it. You, it. It's a feeling like no other. It's an adrenaline rush. It's a, it's a euphoric feeling, and it's not because we're at 10,000 feet that I'm, you know, <laughs> starving for oxygen up here. But uh, 
It's a thrill that, that can't be matched to anything that I've ever experienced. We just came from Lake Abundance where we did some playing, did a little high market and had a great time. We're on up on Lulu Pass on our way back to uh, Bear Claw Bob's for the evening to get some dinner. The weather's beautiful, the snow is as white as white can be and the powder is deep. The Rocky Mountains and their unmatched beauty gives us plenty to look at when we're riding out of Cook City, Montana. So far, every mountain experience I had has just been as inspiring as the last. This one is no exception, and everyone took a moment to gaze upon the wintry landscape. So far, our weather has not let us down, and we have enjoyed every minute of Cook City, Montana. As the sun sets, it's easy to reflect on just how small we really are in the grand scheme of things. Well, today's day five out here at Cook City. Uh, today we're going to ride up to the top of the world, kind of bop around there a little bit. Uh, we're down a few riders, uh, Rick and Jacob, or uh, the sled issues, so they're going to hang back today. So we're kind of taking over and we're going to head up to the top of the world, see what we can uh, trouble we can get into up there and uh, hopefully have a good day. Sun's just peeking out, should be really nice. Pilot and Index Peaks dominate the skyline as the Bear 2 Scenic Byway descends into Cook City, Montana. Pilot Peak, the pointy one, is a glacial horn, a pyramid of rock carved by four glaciers. Shorter Index Peak to the right was also carved by glaciers, but it looks more like a fist. Both are best viewed from right where we are right now. We left Cook City this morning on our way up to top of the world in Wyoming. We're going to play there in the snow and the deep powder. Probably not going to be quite as aggressive as we've been the last couple days, but we want to take a look at some scenery. We want to take a look at uh, just what you can do out on, uh, out on the edges of these lakes and meadows. The Bear Tooth Safety Shelter, courtesy of the Cody Country Snowmobile Association, is a great place to warm yourself before heading out or heading back. Equipped with a fireplace, plenty of wood, first aid supplies, satellite phone, and an avalanche beacon station, this life-saving trailer could be your refuge if such an emergency should arise. He might be not enough. No, he's talking to They're right here. Right. Yeah, they must be there. To make up a hill or something. Remember, this is not for overnight stays or camping. I think we can roll this out of here, Kevin. One, two, three. One. 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 Almost there. Yeah. You can ride that right out of there. Kevin came up, looks up this little side hill here, and came to rest up against this tree. He got stuck in a little tree hole. He dug himself out on the other side. He just pushed him over, and now he's ready to ride out of it. Pretty easy. Sometimes it's not that easy, but well, he had to do a little digging to make that move. But that wasn't one of the worst stucks we've seen, that's for sure. Out here, riding out of Cook City, Montana, over here in uh, top of the world, Wyoming. Realizing that it's the last day of snowmobiling on our trip out west. The guys seem to be snowmobiling pretty hard. There's a reason why a lot of the pros come here to ride and make their videos. And we've seen it all over the course of the week. Cook City, Montana and Top of the World, Wyoming have been absolute dreams and I can't wait until I get the opportunity to come back here again. 
The Moms Group, Bear Claw Bob, and his wife Terry have taken great care of us, and I would highly recommend getting in touch with Bear Claw if you're thinking about snowmobiling in Cook City, Montana. There's numerous motels in town that would draw your attention. There's older ones that has character. Uh, mine is only six years old, it's a Super 8, but uh, you don't have to stay with, with me. You, like I said, there's other places, there's good establishments for eating, uh, several bars in town, a lot of snowmobiles like that, and uh, just come out. You'll enjoy the area, the people are, are friendly, and get to know us. We'd, we'd love to get to know you guys. In the winter time, I, I should say year round, we have 85, roughly 85 residents of town, that's including business owners. When the summer comes, that could go up to 150 to 200 because there's summer residents here that come in from other states. Come out for fishing, ATVing, I rent ATVs. Uh, see the area, with, see what you ride on, on snowmobiles, you'd be amazed of, of all the material, rocks and stuff that you're actually riding on. Come out and, and get an ATV or bring one out and, and enjoy the scenery that way too and fish. The fishing, uh, we have Soda Butte Creek, which is not bad. You've got Yellowstone Park, which is five miles down. Uh, we're at the in northeast entrance. And great fishing in Yellowstone. Most of the lakes have great fishing here. You can get a guide, you can get horses. Uh, there's pack trips you can take. In, a, in approximately, probably a 25 mile radius, you've got uh, one, it's about four rivers. You've got Broadwater, which turns into the Yellowstone, Clark, Clark's Fork of the Yellowstone. You've got Soda Butte, you've got Lamar, you've got uh, the Madison, you've got Gardner River, you've got Yellowstone River, which is in, in the park. Um, fly fishing is excellent. That, that's, the, that's the biggest draw here in the summertime is fly fishing. I own several businesses, uh, anywhere from construction to AAA Wrecker. Uh, the wife has a bakery, and then I also own the Super 8 Motel. It's been my pleasure bringing you our adventures from Cook City, Montana, and I'm proud to leave you with a special music video of some of my favorite shots. We'll let Motor City Josh and the Big Three take us out. Just wish that you could see this place